Welcome to the second part of getting started with smart connections. In this part, we will address the fundamental configuration settings. In the configuration window, we specify the types and quantities of families we wish to position and their placement locations. This can be achieved by setting specific offsets from host edges or centers or applying connection rules that determine element placements based on defined connection. You'll find three selection lists at the top of the configuration window. Category determines the group to which configurations belong, such as walls, parts, floors, structural framing, and others. Specifies the host to which they can be applied. Group organizes configurations into folders within each category for better organization. Configuration lists configurations that we want to assign to our selected element by category. The configuration window is divided into four main sections. The detail section allows us to choose the families and host faces where the families will be positioned. In the element position section, we define the precise location on the selected face and specify the number of families, spacing and rotation. In the adjust layout by searching for other elements, we can create specific search rules for positioning our structural connection families. For instance, they can be placed at beam intersections, in proximity to other elements, specific wall connections and various other situations. The placement control section offers various flip options for adjusting the family's orientation and additional rules to streamline manual workflow in 3D modeling processes. We'll start setting up configurations correctly by explaining a couple of key settings. We can establish a maximum of 20 rules. To enhance clarity, these rules can be renamed. It's crucial to prioritize rules when adjusting the geometry of our elements with cut or void families. Specifically, rules involving cuts should be given top priority. Otherwise, the geometry of the unchanged element will be taken into account. We always have to turn on the toggle button to make sure our rule is applied. Once it's on, we can proceed with setting it up. First, we choose the family we want to use in the configurations. To find it quicker, we can use the filter in the select category list. The family selection list displays families that meet a couple of requirements. Families must belong to the structural framing or connections or generic models category. If we use a generic models category, in the family editor, we must always set the vertical checkbox off and a work plane base checkbox on. We can select the family from the list or to quickly locate a particular family, we can use the family browser tool. Just type in part of the family's name and the browser will find it for us. We can precisely define our host's characteristics with the host filter such as weight or other attributes. Based on these filters, our families will either meet the criteria or not for inclusion. If I set a filter to add elements based on the volume of my wall, plates will only be added to a single wall that meets the specified volume value. With smart connections, we can position line or point-based families. When it comes to line-based families, we have the flexibility to place them either horizontally or vertically on our chosen face. For cut and join controls, we specify whether our void or cut families should cut the host. To ensure that an extrusion joins the host, both the family and host materials must be identical. As you can see, we've added this extension to our wall panel, which now is a part of this wall. Continuing to the face selection table. In this step, we simply select the face where we want to position our elements. Here we can choose either a single or multiple host faces, such as top, bottom, or any other location where we want our family to be positioned. It's important to note that the start and end of the wall can vary depending on the situation. Here's a brief explanation of when the wall start is considered the start and when it's considered the end. 
regarding the explanatory image for face selection. You'll notice differences across various categories. For instance, floors display a different image and the left and right positions depend on the span direction location. Similarly, the left and right sides may differ from the shown image for columns based on the configurations defined in the family editor. However, you can always verify your result using the apply button in these cases. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part where we'll explore the following configuration sections.